epic task of flipping this track back on. I've seen different people do it different ways, and I'm not really decided on which one's the best. For me, um, it, it's got all the shoes still on it, so if it was just the track chain, it'd be obviously a lot lighter and easier to work with, but I think what I'm gonna try to do, at least to begin with, is get my log chain, if I can fit the hooks through these slots right there. I don't know if they will or not, probably not. If my log chain won't fit through there, then I'm gonna put my bar, my pry bar, through the bolt hole and hook the chain on both sides of it and hope that it doesn't just slip out. But I'm gonna try to fly, just curl this end up and over and drag it right up over the sprocket. Now, I don't know if that sprocket, if the sprocket, there's no oil in the sprocket, so I don't really wanna run it, spin it. Actually, maybe I'll go look and see if I, I might be able to go ahead and get some oil in the sprocket actually first. I've got a tiny little bottle. It won't be great, but it'll work. Um, I need to get it oriented. Yeah, anyway, so my plan is I'm going to hook the chain and just try to fold it back on itself and come right up over the top. And I'll make my connection over the idler or just behind the idler where I've done it in the past. But let me see if I can get some oil in this uh, final drive first. Oh, man never restarted the video oh well so far it's going way too good I'm just certain my luck will run out here shortly but I got the first end of that of the track pulled up just sitting on the sprocket just flipped it over on itself with the chain and now I'm gonna hook the chain to my bucket and if you see I've got it draped over top my uh, guide rollers and I'm going to try to keep tension on the track with the chain while I walk while I walk the track chain on with the sprocket
Look at that. <laughs> that went way better than I could have hoped, which means now probably, probably trying to pin the track chain is going to really suck. But that's the part I was really scared about right there was flipping the track chain back over that sprocket. Um, let me take the chain off of it now. It should, it's not going to slouch back through that in the middle of the vibers. I was really worried about how it would catch on those, on those rollers too. I thought I was going to have to get the tractor over here and put the forks in to kind of let it ride up over the rollers. But uh, yeah, that worked really well. So let me get the chain off of it. I've got to pull the grease dirt out of this idler and push it in. And then we'll try to flip the front part of the chain up and over. Oh yeah. We'll bring our bucket in and push in easy. Push in easy on that idler. Float away somewhere safe. is ready to work. <laughs> it shot grease 10 feet like it was water.
Okay, so I spared you all the the uh, boredom of watching me grind for a long time. Even sped up, that's not that interesting. But I've got it all. I ground some of this, I ground this down to make it smooth and clean. And then I actually ground a little bit off of this face because this pin, in my opinion, was just a hair too short. When I put it through, it actually, it's, it seems like it's really small too. Like it really, it really has some play. Um, but I mean, that'll make it easier to put in, but it'll also make it want to egg out over time. Anyway, when I put this pin all the way in, I couldn't get my keeper pin through the backside. Like it just wouldn't fit, period. So I actually ground a little bit off of this face and off the back face in order to make it to where I can actually get through and I can slide that keeper pin right through now really easy. So we've got it rigged back up basically the same way we had it last night. I've looped the chain come along is just looped around this the body of this sleeve here and I should be able to just pull it right straight in. I'll have a little bit of play with a bar on this connection. This chain is on there but I'll take it off here in just a second. It's not holding anything. The only thing holding right now is the is the come along and I've or chain hoist I guess I just looped my standard log chain here looped it around this sleeve and hooked it back on itself to give myself a pull point because my hook wasn't big enough to go around the sleeve and I couldn't hook it anywhere else in the eye and that's good it gives it a really good centralized pull the way it is I should be able to finagle this just a little bit with a bar and a hammer as needed too much. My earplugs out so I can hear the birds. in. This side still looks like it's way out of line, but maybe my little chamfer will help. It's that bushing still that's giving me a hard time. a little, little off of this. Get it flex. Get it with the big one. There she goes. Okay, 
take one in, keep a pin, keep your pins in, and then what I do with my keeper pin here is I just heat it with the torch and bend it just a little bit. I'm just going to use my sad little impact here. I'll have Ryan's big nice one. But I think for the sake of running these bolts on, I'll be okay. Huh. That does not want to go under there. The track's got so much slack in it that it bolt holes aren't lining up. But I think I think I can fix that. Put the right side bar. this track pumped up. I'm not sure how much grease it'll take. It really didn't shoot out too much. It's kind of weird. It seems like it would take just gobs and gobs when you look at how big that piston is, but we shall see. Or add a little tension to it. I guess I should let it kind of just kind of bounce in and relax a little bit. There we go. Now I can set my camera up in the shade because I spun the bucket around. I wanted to get that, got that final drive rolled around too to where it's in the right position. But like I still check the oil in it and top it off again. So okay. Let's keep greasing. Funny, you just push this track out just a little bit. <laughs> like an inch is all you have to push this big this piston out. And that'll tighten up your track. <laughs> 